An ever-increasing amount of people believe that extending your life through biological means, in a way that most companies in the field of longevity are focusing their efforts on, is in fact, still not enough for them as only stopping or reversing the aging process still wouldn't protect you from accidents or world-ending events. They also fear that the people they love, who are at an advanced age, likely wouldn't get to take advantage of the impending longevity advancements. Recent advancements in our understanding of consciousness and artificial intelligence are now giving those people hope. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I'll show you a new emerging field in computer science which is promising people a life after death, how they intend to actually make up of this seemingly wild promise, and finally, if and when we can expect to make use of it. Is it possible for a machine to think? Is artificial intelligence the end of humanity or a technology that will help us even after we die? Professor Maggie Savin Baden of the School of Education talks on the role of artificial intelligence in digital immortality, virtual humans, and what the future holds. Over the last decade, the notion of digital immortality has arisen, and it is described in this piece as the continuance of an active or passive digital presence beyond your death. This will describe how advancements in information management, machine-to-machine -machine communication, data mining, and artificial intelligence are now allowing for an active presence beyond death. It will illustrate how digital immortality has progressed beyond basic memorial sites and beyond the grave updates from deceased family members or acquaintances. Companies are increasingly committed to building digitally eternal identities. There is evidence that digital immortality is having an influence on religious contexts, given the variety of activities and behaviors linked with it. For example, digital immortality has an impact on sorrow and mourning rituals. It is also introducing new types of legacy as well as new challenges for the funeral business. Robots or thinking machines are frequently associated with artificial intelligence. Popular perceptions of artificial intelligence include science fiction figures such as the HAL 9000 computer from 2001 or the androids from Channel Fawz Humans. In current marketing terminology, it is defined as any moderately complicated software or algorithm, generally based on machine learning principles, although the complexity and variety of AI are considerably larger. AI has recently seen significant advancements, such as enhanced text-to-speech, speech recognition, and high-quality avatars, which are corporeal manifestations of oneself. The problem with AI is overcoming the uncanny valley, which is the concept that human copies may provoke emotions of eeriness in appearance, sound, and notably behavior, such as emotional responses. Virtual assistants such as Siri and Alexa, for example, give speech and conversational interfaces to information and are beginning to deliver on some of the promises of virtual personal assistants. The increased use of machine learning techniques to mine vast quantities of data and draw inferences from it that are comparable to human analysis. The European Parliament has called for the introduction of a set of rules to control the usage and development of robotics and artificial intelligence. It is proposed that the following issues be addressed. The establishment of a European Agency for Robots and Artificial Intelligence. A legal definition of smart autonomous robots, including registration for the most advanced. A code of ethics to govern the ethical design, manufacture, and usage of robots. A new reporting framework for businesses that requires them to declare the impact of robots and AI to their economic outcomes for taxation and social security contributions. An insurance program that is required for businesses to cover harm caused by their robots. The paper is particularly interested in the future of autonomous vehicles, such as self-driving automobiles, although there appears to be little clarity about how this may be implemented or developed as of yet. However, Sophia, a humanoid robot, delivered a statement at the United Nations in 2017 to inspire the awareness that further debate and laws in this field are required. Eterni.me a startup that aims to make this a reality, wants to clarify this up as soon as possible. Because when you're developing a nascent artificial intelligence firm that claims to bring back the dead, or, at the very least, their memories and character as stored in their digital imprint, anticipate a lot of backlash. The site started with the appearance of any other Silicon Valley online company, but with a distinct new spin on an old message. While social media businesses want you to share and build your story while you're still alive, and lifelogging firm Momoto promises to capture significant and shareable events, 
Eterni aims to bring it all together for people you leave behind in the form of a coherent AI they can converse with. 3,000 people registered to the service within the first four days of the site going live which paints a pretty clear picture of how many people are actually interested in such a new industry. One of the most significant changes has been the shift away from a broad concept of AI and toward distinct kinds. Virtual people are one particular area of progress. Turing proposed the imitation game, a test meant to answer the question, can machines think? His forecast was that the planned exam will be passed by the year 2000, however this did not happen. In the 1980s, Searle proposed that the computer is only a symbol processing system that cannot be considered to think. Is it intelligent if a machine can play chess better than the best human player? Searle would argue that no, it is only the human programmers who have coded the computer to implement their ideas who are clever. But how does this differ from a human mentor teaching a pupil to play chess? Do we argue that the mentor is wise and that the learner is simply following the guidelines she was taught? According to the literature, the phrase, virtual humans, is frequently used as an umbrella word for chatbots, autonomous agents, and pedagogical agents. Virtual humans are computer-generated characters that exhibit embodied life-like behaviors such as speech, emotions, movement, and gestures. Evidence suggests that many users are not just at ease engaging with high-quality virtual humans, but that an emotional connection may be formed between users and these virtual humans. Instead of clicking on icons or making menu selections, the emphasis is on allowing the user to communicate with the software using ordinary words. The debate over whether computers may have consciousness is not new, with proponents of strong artificial intelligence and weak artificial intelligence exchanging philosophical ideas for a long time. Although he was dismissive of strong AI, John Searle defined it as believing that the correctly designed computer truly is a mind, in the sense that computers with the right programs may actually be said to understand and experience cognitive states. Weak AI, on the other hand, thinks that robots lack awareness, mind, and sensibility and can only imitate cognition and comprehension. When it comes to artificial consciousness, there are numerous issues to consider. Most fundamentally, there is the issue of explaining consciousness, or how subjectivity may originate from matter, often referred to as the hard problem of consciousness. Furthermore, our perception of human awareness is affected by our own subjective experience. Whereas we know about human consciousness from the first-person perspective, we will only be able to access artificial consciousness through the third-person perspective. This is related to the topic of how to tell if a machine has awareness. Despite a large number of science fiction portrayals to the contrary, experts generally agree that modern machines and robots are not sentient. However, in a study of 184 students, the responses to the question, do you believe that modern electronic computers are conscious, were, no, 82%, uncertain, 15%, and yes, 3%. Surprisingly, the survey's question was about modern electronic computers, not AI or robots. This might change in the future. Then, depending on their capacities, it may be possible to consider the idea of robothood and assign moral standing to these future robots. There is already an intriguing and contentious debate going on about giving robots legal personhood. A deeper understanding of artificial consciousness, artificial reason, artificial sentience, and related ideas is required for the discussion on the moral and legal status of robots, as well as the larger topic of how to respond to and interact with machines. More should be said about artificial consciousness and the lack of awareness in today's AI and robots. Not only are we witnessing advancements in information management, data mining, and artificial intelligence, but we are also seeing advances in the integration of our human bodies with technology. This, body hacking, entails implanting chips into our arms to unlock doors and pick up metal items, as well as implanting antennas into our brains to convert the color spectrum into distinct vibrations, allowing the user to hear colors. While some regard this as art, while others see it as toying with technology, there are some important breakthroughs, such as the development of bone implants that allow the installation of a replacement limb on the skeleton, which can then be controlled organically via brain impulses. So, um, I mean, things I think that are really hard about uh, having a useful humanoid robot is, can it navigate through the world without being explicitly trained? Uh, I mean, can, without explicit, like, line-by-line uh, -line instructions. Um, can you, can you talk to it and say, you know, please uh, pick up that bolt, 
um, and uh, attach it to the car with that wrench and it should be able to do that. Um, it should be able to, you know, please, you know, please go to the store and get me the following groceries. So, what is your opinion on potentially having people live forever through a digital avatar? Do you believe that the laws of consciousness would get in the way of the digital version being the exact same as the one you came to know in real life? What about the ethics behind potentially bringing someone who is already dead back to life? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.